Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's talk about how to troubleshoot a problem like a pro. In my previous life, I spent 17 and a half years at Adobe Systems as a solutions engineer, and it was my job to help fix customers' problems. I wasn't in tech support, I was on the floor. I remember distinctly being at NASCAR, and it was my job as I was running back and forth between editing bays answering questions. And many of these things um, do have answers and they're easy to understand. This is about a conversation about the kinds of things you can do and where you can look to help fix your problem. If you're looking for a solution to get your uh, your video out and you're worried, you might wanna try a different tutorial that I have on troubleshooting a Premiere Pro project. We're going to go through this and hopefully you're going to learn how I would troubleshoot these kinds of problems so you can start doing that. Let's have a look. Okay. The first thing to understand is don't panic. I'm serious about this. If you're panicking and trying to figure things out, it's no good. Don't panic, take a breath, let's get through this. It's best to use a methodical approach and everything will be all right, a scientific kind of approach. But if you're looking at just exporting your video, you're, you're coming here because it just won't export, here are some choices. These are three things to do. One, turn off the GPU. The GPU acceleration and GPU drivers are the number one cause of problems, not just in Premiere Pro, but in every application. GPU accelerator drivers are just notoriously problematic. They're not always bad. You, you can go many versions and they're just fine, but that's the very first thing to do. Go into the settings in Adobe Premiere Pro, turn off GPU acceleration, and now see if you can export. If you still can't export, then try exporting out half of the timeline. Set an in and out point for the first half and export it. If that works, that tells you your problem isn't in that part of the timeline. Then try the next half. If something happens, it crashes, locks up, or there's an error, then take that down to a half of that, a half of that, a half, until you find the culprit, which a lot of times can be one specific clip in a timeline. So that's if you're just coming here to, eh, how do I export my video? Turn off the GPU, export half, and then the last one is import a project into a new Premiere Pro project. This again is a really good way to clear things up. You, you start a new project, save that project, and then in the media browser, import in one timeline if you want or the full project. And a lot of times that will fix it. But let's talk about methodically going through um, how to troubleshoot. The first thing to do is to divide the problem and isolate each one of the parts. One is the computer, which is your system resources, fonts, drivers, video codecs, and any extra stuff. Next is your media, QuickTime, drone clips, variable frame rate clips, corrupt media, all of that. And lastly, it's Premiere Pro, where we can have things like a corrupt cache, problem install, and sometimes bugs. I want to say sometimes because too many times I just see somebody throwing up their hands, and, eh, it's bugs. Not always. Let's keep going. Let's look at what is fixable, because this is essential. Your computer is 100% fixable. What I mean is, if the problem is detected as part of your computer, you have the ability to fix that yourself. Very important. It doesn't mean that if your problem is you've got giant 4K images on a crappy little computer and you can fix that, that's not what I'm talking about. Your media is mostly fixable if you backed up the original media. Premiere Pro, 0% fixable because you're going to have to wait for an update from Adobe. So if, if it's, isolated that it is Premiere Pro, then is it fixable by you? Absolutely not. This is an incredibly rare condition to have. Most are the first two. Let's look at your computer. And by the way, that is a real price for a current computer as of today. Yikes. That is not a good video editing system. Not enough power. Up-to-date drivers and updates. Corrupt fonts. QuickTime issues, 
Too much extra crap. Poorly maintained. So how do we fix this? Not enough power, buy a new computer. This happens more and more and more because of little laptops like this. Somebody has a cheap ass laptop and they've got giant drone footage, two plus two cables, that ain't gonna work. You can't do it. Um, you just, you can't. You can work on proxies and I've got a tutorial in that. Up to date drivers, what do you do? Well, install the drivers. Oh my goodness, I can't tell you how many times someone has contacted me and they thought they were updated and then sure enough they check and they're missing an update for a driver or a GPU accelerated driver or something they updated in. Hey, everything's magical and it works. Corrupt fonts, replace them with fresh fonts. If you're having problems with titles or graphics, graphics that you created, not images that you brought in, but anything that has to do with a font, the font in your system could be corrupt. Why do they get corrupt? Who cares? Don't worry about the why. The why is just whatever. It could be you downloaded some really questionable free fonts and they're just crappy fonts and they're hosing your system. Get rid of them. The only way to, to, to fix that is to get new, fresh installed versions of those. QuickTime issues, oh boy. Adobe has uh, deprecated 32-bit QuickTime, which is not supported by Apple anymore. Let me tell you how I solved all of my issues on Windows. Um, I'm gonna talk about um, Mac in a second, but every single one of my issues is fixed by removing every bit of Apple software off of my Windows computers. And I've got lots of computers. They have no Apple software, no QuickTime. I can still import videos because Adobe includes QuickTime in the newest versions of Premiere Pro. So all of these issues are gone in a new version. If you're back in CS6 days, then there are still QuickTime issues. Adobe can't fix Apple QuickTime issues, okay? Totally remove QuickTime or reinstall QuickTime. If you're on the Mac and keep reinstalling QuickTime over and over and over, and sometimes that, that fixes things. Too much crap, take some of this stuff off. There's a rule in a professional environment that is worth thinking about. In a professional environment, you're not allowed to install all the less latest weird ass stuff on your computer. And a poorly maintained system, give it some love and then try a different computer. This is an important one. If you do have the, the option of just taking your project and moving it to a different computer, if your media and project are on an external drive, you can just plug that into a different computer. That's a great way to see if it's your computer or Premiere Pro, because if you drag it over there, it could be um, malfunctioning on that second computer. Now let's talk about your media. Could be a new camera and format, Things like variable frame rates, corrupt media, unknown voodoo. So how do we fix these? New camera and format, wait for an update from Adobe. No way around this. When Canon, Sony uh, introduce a new format that is uh, you know, 5K compression and or ProRes 5K or whatever, they, they, uh, they have given the software development kit to the Adobe engineers, they're writing that. And they won't, come, they won't just take that one update for that one video format and update Premiere Pro. They'll roll it in with a bunch of other updates. This is very typical of every software manufacturer. They, they're not just going to update every month with a, a new update. They'll roll it in so you gotta wait. Variable frame rates. Transcode, uh, Handbrake is a good one. Handbrake is a free uh, application that can read a lot of formats and spit out a lot of formats. And if you have some kind of problematic format, just spit out a new version of that clip or clips and Premiere Pro will like them better. Corrupt media, replace with original. There's nothing else you can do with this. I do have one drone footage from Dutch Digital Dude and everything from him has been great, but there's one specific clip that I know causes problems. I have no idea why, it just does not um, like to be on my system. 
And sometimes there's unknown voodoo and there's no options. Look, I'm trying to be honest here. I'm trying to tell you that not everything has a direct one-to-one -one solution. Sometimes with media, there's just some unknown weird ass stuff that's happening and there are no options and there's no way around this. There are way too many formats, too many codecs, too many things going on. I mean, people are, are editing stuff off phones and pulling it off discs and Lord knows where they're getting it. And it's just a, a huge problem. I, I said I was going to talk about the Mac. Now, I mentioned that for me, removing all the Apple software on Windows, hey, I, I'm in a happy world. Let's talk about uh, my daughter, Simone Smith. She's a feature film editor. She has edited seven feature films with tens of thousands of clips. And you know how many problems she's had? Zero, none, no problems. She transcodes everything to ProRes LT. She still has all the Apple software on her Mac Pro. She's never had any problems. This used to be the domain of Final Cut Pro 7. It just wouldn't edit anything properly unless it was ProRes um, LT. LT is the light version of ProRes where you can just drop in any clips. She's editing stuff that, that's usually shot on um, Alexa or Red or something that's a big, huge frame rate. But she just works all with ProRes uh, LT. Never had a problem, seven years. Uh, one of the things she, she uh, restricts herself from is updating to the latest Premiere Pro right away. And if you're in the middle of a project, you're in the middle of a feature film, you're not about, don't, please, for the love of God, don't update anything in the middle of a project. If it's working great, don't touch anything, okay? So I, I wanted to just tell you that as an example, because seven feature films, never one problem, that says a lot. Let's talk about the last part of the equation, and that's Premiere Pro. Corrupt cache, corrupt preview files, a funky install, cracked software, it's a bug, maybe. So how do we solve these? Corrupt cache, hold down the Alt key on Windows, option on Mac, immediately after launching Premiere Pro. So with Premiere Pro uh, quit, Launch it, hold that down, and you can add shift to that too. And that will clear the plugin cache. So this gets rid of the cache information that Adobe accumulates, uh, Premiere Pro accumulates in the background. And once it gets rid of that, it just rebuilds in it. It's not throwing away your media. This fixes probably 99% uh, of any of the, the problems with Premiere Pro. Okay, corrupt preview files, delete your previews. If your uh, changing, uh, turning the GPU on and off, there the the previews will be deleted. But you can, th there's a in your settings, you can see where you saved your preview files. You can just throw all of those away because when Premiere Pro reloads that project, it's starting to connect all the media and it's connecting the preview files. Doesn't know that's a corrupt file. It looks over here, loads it, bang. You crashed. So you delete it, it looks over there, it's not there, it generates a fresh preview. And by the way, you don't really need previews. Premiere Pro can run a lot of stuff in real time. A funky install. Well, the only way to really fix that is to reinstall from the Creative Cloud desktop application. That's um, in your system when you install it, that's the best place to, to get everything fresh. You can reinstall, you can uninstall and then reinstall. Cracked software. Do I really have to say what the solution is here? If you're dealing with cracked software, pirated software, ripped off software, you're going to get problems. That's part of the decision that you've made to use pirated software. You're going to have problems, okay? And the last one, it's a bug, maybe. Like I said, it's rare that the problem is a bug. It usually is not. If it is, you have to wait for Adobe to update it. And it's no secret, historically, Adobe has a very regimented release schedule. After NAB in April, they show you all the cool stuff and they release sometimes a month or two after that. When that big release comes out, then they come up with a, a dot release after that, maybe another month or two after that. And then IBC in the fall, which is the big show in Europe, there's another big release and then there's another one in December. That's when you're gonna see those updates. So you have to wait for those times. All right. And last one, create a new project with bars and tone. 
And what you can do is start Premiere Pro fresh with nothing in it, none of, none of your old projects or media, create new bars and tones, drop it into the timeline and export the file. To me, this is a good test. This shows that the Premiere Pro created media and Premiere Pro itself, if it exports correctly, then it's not a problem with Premiere Pro or Premiere Pro created stuff. Now you have to start looking at your media because remember, you could have corrupt media. So magic isn't real. You reap what you sow. If you have a system with a bunch of crap on it and you're having problems, you reap what you sow. Keep a clean system, maintain that system. Okay. Back up original media projects and graphics. Back up, back up, back up, back up. So if you've got corrupt media now or the project is toast, you've got all this backed up, you can always replace it with fresh, clean media. So don't expect some kind of magic fix. That's what I mean when I say magic isn't real. Uh, these are the kinds of steps that I would take when I was working at Adobe to help people fix problems. And the number one problem usually is um, it's the GPU driver or it's a corrupt cache. So you can turn off that GPU driver or uh, hold down Option or Alt while you uh, launch Premiere Pro to get rid of the cache. All right, so there you go. Some uh, hard uh, love on, on how to really get in there and, and understand the process that, that someone like me would use uh, when going into a customer and trying to fix things. So now you know the steps that I would use so you can use those same steps. All right, if you're new to Video Reveal and you found this kind of stuff informative, uh, take a moment and subscribe. If you want to support us some more, please join us through PayPal. We've got some amazing supporters. You can donate monthly or you can donate um, one time. There's a link in the description and also on the front of the channel. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and I am here to be your security blanket and dragging you kicking and screaming into fixing your system.